Hi, this is my review of the Flex Tale Infinite Adventures Volume 1, Western Realm of Aquilae, a fantasy role-playing resource. This is a massive collection of points of interest. These are different sites and places that you can use in your RPG campaigns when you play with other people or as a solo gamer. I have reviewed the AVI point of interest the link will be in the description below. If you want more details about a single point of interest, I recommend that you watch that review. Let's get started with this volume 1. First, the quality. The quality is great. The document is fully bookmarked and hyperlinked in its table of contents. Everything is well organized, written and explained. The graphic design is Colorful but simple at the same time, there is not an overload of images. And when you purchase this volume 1, you obtain a mobile friendly file as well. This also means that if you want to print it, you're going to save some money on ink. So overall the quality is great and there are many images concerning maps, charts and tables. So that you can use this document in the most efficient way possible. Now let's talk about the contents. First you have an introduction to this toolkit or resource. The ways in which you can use it as a game master or dungeon master or as a solo adventurer because this toolkit is system neutral and setting neutral as well. This is for the Aquila campaign setting so there's nothing stopping you from taking these points of interest and using them in your own campaign. And because everything in the document or almost everything is organized in random tables, it's very handy to use it as a no prep resource, but you can also plan ahead using the points of interest that you want. You can pick and choose from all of the different adventure elements. And when it comes to solo gaming, you can use this to dynamically generate encounters and adventures and eventually bring everything together into a campaign if you so wish. Now when it comes to the points of interest themselves, they are perfectly organized with their basic information, the type of the point of interest, the environment, the rarity, the discoverability, that is how easy it is to spot or encounter these different adventure sites, the rewards and penalties related to the points of interests, the threat levels concerning hazards and enemies, the secrets within those points of interest, the variability within the site concerning the creatures encountered therein, the different tests and checks, the scaled effects, surprises. There is also a difficulty class generator for each of these points of interest. You also have guards and bystanders information, generic non-player character combatants and generalized rules as well. Now I'm going to give you a small sample of these different points of interest without spoiling things. First we have the ancient halls. Mountainous forest temples erected long ago as holdouts, hordes and centers for religious and magical study. And remember that there are many secrets, rumors and perhaps tidbits of vague information for you to discover if they are real or not. You also have the aquifers of Charnel Heights, an entire region owes its livelihood to a system of aquifers that provide nourishment to the otherwise desolate land. Then we have the Armory of Armies, a massive complex and infrastructure set to produce huge quantities of arms and armor, serving mercenary companies, armies and other large forces. We also have the Army of the Damned, a once great assortment of militants, now masterless. Rather than turn running, these warriors have rallied around the forces of darkness. Each member is either undead or cursed, having failed their sworn brothers or lieges in some capacity. And these are just some of the many places that you will encounter within this collection of points of interest. There are many other sites such as the Barrowlands, the Behemoth Falls, or the Blades of Thyraxis. After that we have the Appendix, containing events and quirks. These are common happenings that you can encounter during your adventures. You have an overview, 
information on rewards and penalties, result, variability, choices and implications, random events, tables and subtables within each of these different events and quirks, and even specific event encounters. So you have information, tables and subtables of so many different things. Perhaps there is an avalanche. Perhaps you encounter a desperate victim. Maybe you enter into a flight and fight situation. Maybe you are being hunted or someone is being hunted. Perhaps you come upon a sinkhole or you participate in a tavern brawl. So there are many events that happen in the wilderness in different dangerous sites, in adventure hubs such as cities, towns, villages. And like I said, because of the variability and the tables, many things could be different when you encounter them several times. In the case of the desperate victim, perhaps during a particular occasion, you encounter someone that is being threatened. In some other case, you may encounter someone that is being attacked with raw violence. In other cases, Maybe somebody is being persecuted for some sort of political reason. So all of these different events and quirks, they are always going to be different and even if you encounter the same result twice or more, they serve as inspiration for you to tweak and modify things according to your imagination or using some other oracle. Because at the end of this document, you have a condensed version of a section of the Solo Adventuring Toolkit. Not all of it, of course, just the initial quick start section. So you have ways in which you can modify the difficulty of different encounters. You have a map generator, a hallway encounter section, chamber encounters, dead end encounters, trap generators, difficulty class generators, treasure generators, obstacle generators, weapon generators, etc, etc, etc. So if you do not own the Solo Adventuring Toolkit, this is a great pocket version of it, or an introduction to it as well. However, I recommend that you seriously consider getting the Solo Adventuring Toolkit because I consider it to be the best solo document in existence, at least in current times. So please check out my ongoing review of the Solo Adventuring Toolkit if you haven't already. The link will be in the description below, it's truly a massive document. So what do I think of this volume 1 for the Aquilae setting, featuring the infinite adventures, points of interest? This is probably a must have for those players that are not too interested in generating everything when it comes to their solo adventures, and as a game master it's going to save you a lot of time and make improvisational situations a lot easier to run on the fly because you have all of these references to different structures, non-player characters, hazards, details concerning the terrain, the weather, the treasures that you will encounter, the geography itself, ways in which you can modify the difficulty, the contents of different sites, you also have that section at the end, if you don't want to pull out your solo adventuring toolkit all the time, you have the condensed version at the end of this document. The events and quirks are going to be useful, not only for these points of interest, but also for any adventure, whether you are playing with your group or as a solo experience. And when it comes to solo players, it's going to be very fun to move blindly across the map of Aquilae or any other campaign setting while generating everything randomly using these points of interest and the tables contained in each one of them. So my highest recommendation for this volume 1 of Infinite Adventures and 5 lucky winners that click in the link that I'm going to put in the description below will get this document for free. So hurry up, pause this video and click on that link. You can thank the author Jason Evans Payne for such a generous offering. Thank you for watching this review. If you have any comments or questions, please let me know. And thank you so much to those of you that have been supporting the channel by sending right through RPG gift certificates. If anyone else wants to further support the channel, the information on how to do that will be in the description below. Once again, thank you and see you later.